hunger for information. Millionaires and penniless emigrants queued to find out what had happened to their relatives. Governments demanded updates, and newspapers offered huge payments for what would be the scoop of the century. The Titanic was the first great global media sensation. Because of the wireless messages, the world outside knew that something terrible had happened, but it didn't know what. In the race to be first, there were garbled versions of the news based on misread parts of messages. Headlines on both sides of the Atlantic had reported the Titanic being towed into harbour with all the passengers safe. But the only way they could get the real story was through the wireless room of the Carpathia. Here, the younger Marconi boy, Harold Bride, having been pulled to safety, was once again sending messages alongside Jack Phillips's old friend, Harold Cottam. New York to Carpathia. New York to Carpathia. To Mr. Hurd, Carpathia. The Sun newspaper will pay handsomely for wireless dispatches about Titanic and exclusive story when you land. Carpathia to Chicago Tribune. Carpathia picked up 700, mostly women, over 2,000 lost. Iceberg continuous mass 25 miles. Dr. F. H. Blackmar. New York to Carpathia. To Mr. Hurd, Carpathia. I want Titanic's pictures quickly. We'll pay well. Bob Holland. This is Cape Race, calling London. No news here. Reuters are getting news, one hour before us. Give us better service. Use cable. New York to Carpathia. Is Colonel Astor aboard? New York to Carpathia. To Harold Cottam, Operator Carpathia. Send us your story. Exclusively worth $200. Tonight. From Jack Bins, The American Magazine. The messages sent by rescued passengers give a glimpse of their relief, disbelief, and the realization that many of them had lost everything. One said simply, completely destitute, no clothes. Poorer passengers, worried about the cost of sending a message, kept it brief. Safe, but, was a masterpiece of succinctness. And you wonder how much those two words would have meant to his family in Somerset when the message arrived. Carpathia to New York. Sending passenger Marconi grams. To Robert Goodman, New York. I am safe. Praying that Harry will be picked up by another steamer. Arriving Carpathia, Rene. Carpathia to New York. To Mr. Wolf, Cologne. Titanic sunk. Saved on board Cunard Line Carpathia. Completely destitute. No clothes. Alfred. Carpathia to New York. To Arthur Williams, Brooklyn. New York. Titanic sank. Peter and I, safe on Carpathia. Lost everything. Rebecca. Crowds on both sides of the Atlantic waited for the latest news of what had happened. But it was going to be Harold Bride's story, sold to the New York Times, that became the template for all the stories that followed. It had the understated heroism of Jack Phillips, staying at his post to the last and beyond, it had the band playing while the boat went under. It had acts of bravery and cowardice. And it had all the poignancy of the doomed glory of the great liner. But how did other wireless operators that night remember the events? Walter Gray, at Cape Ray Station, was one of those young men who had to listen from afar to the wretched deaths of 1,500 people. I was officer in charge of Cape Race, Newfoundland, when the Titanic tragedy occurred. But I personally knew Phillips, the chief operator on that ship. He was a personal friend of mine. Whenever he was on watch and I was on watch, we knew each other's style of transmission. And very often we'd say how do to each other. That night, about 8 o'clock, half past 8 perhaps, I was on watch again and... Uh, 
he came on with about 30 of these messages, which I personally copied, and then I had a little check. So uh, I asked him how he liked the ship. Oh, he says she was a wonderful ship. There's a wonderful crowd on board, and they're having a wonderful time all around. Well, we chatted just loosely like that, and then I bade him good night. A couple of hours later, Walter's assistant ran in with the shocking news. When all at once, a chap named Godwin, my third operator, rushed in. And he says, my God, Grace, is the Titanic of Stuckerberg. And so I dropped what I was doing, and I rushed in, and I called Phillips, asked what we, what we could do to assist. So he told me to stand by, and he would get back to me, which I did. Meantime, he established immediate contact with a number of other ships. He was sending out both the CQD and the SOS, and ships would respond, of course. The Olympic, for instance, was outward bound from New York to uh, Southampton, but he was 500 miles away. And uh, he telegraphed the master of the, uh, of the Titanic to say that he was firing up an extra engine, he was altering course, so they reduced the distance between the two ships and suggested that the master of the Titanic do likewise. Because at that juncture, they <coughs> didn't think the Titanic was going to sink. She was supposed to be unsinkable. Well, of course, I was too busily engaged in uh, watching the whole proceedings that I didn't have very much time to think of Phillips, my friend, but uh, I was admiring him for the judgment he was using rather than fearful of his uh, death. But uh, he, slow he was a first-class operator and a fast, fast telegraphist, but he slowed down his speed from, say, 30 words per minute to 15 words per minute to make sure that every ship hearing the signals would, would readily copy it. And there was never a tremor from beginning to end throughout all of his transmissions, not once. And he, he kept the full story going about the condition of the weather, about putting women and, and children off in the boats, and, uh, and then he started to say, now sinking slowly by the head. And even when he said that, there was never a tremor out of him. And so presently, about half past one, Newfoundland time, uh, silence. Soon after that, uh, I was in touch with the Victorian, outbound from Montreal to uh, Liverpool, and he called me, and he, he was between me and the Carpathia. Carpathia, by the way, was about 350 miles from Cape Verde. Victor, Victor, Victorian said to me, he said, did you hear that? And I said, well, I heard uh, uh, signals that weren't really readable. He says, I think that he was trying to get on his emergency there. And then there was total silence. Well, nothing more was known until the Carpathia uh, managed to get messages through the Olympic and to us, telling all about having uh, proceeded to the scene and picked up everything that was to be picked up and was proceeding on its voyage to New York and so on. As soon as the survivors arrived in New York, there would be questions about how the disaster had happened and the wireless messages would provide some of the only real hard and fast evidence. It was clear that warnings of ice had been received, so why had they been ignored? And there would be demands for a swift change to the haphazard way that wireless had been organised on board ship. Investigators would be shocked to realise that one of the closest ships had turned off its wireless and had heard nothing of the Titanic's calls for help. But before getting to New York... The exhausted wireless operators had to complete one last duty, and that was to send back the names of more than 700 survivors. New York to Carpathia. It is vitally important that we receive names of survivors, including third class and crew. Please do your utmost to give us this information at earliest possible moment. White Star Line. New York to Olympic to Commander Haddock Olympic. Are all Titanic passengers safe? Olympic to Carpathia. Can you give me names of survivors to forward? Carpathia to Olympic. Okay, stand by. Mrs. L. P. Smith. Mrs. W. D. Douglas and maid. Mrs. J. J. Astor and maid. <laughs> 
Mrs. Thomas Pierce, Countess of Roths, and Maid. Elizabeth Dowdell, Sir Cosmo Duff Gordon, Lady Duff Gordon, and Maid. Mrs. E. Mellinger, and Child. Mr. J. Bruce Ismay, and Manservant. Mrs. Nasser, Mr. J. Weir.